We're done the chaos conversion part of this operation and it's time to start hacking the tunnel. First step of course is gonna be pulling out all the coolant and then we'll start measuring and cutting. This time I'm definitely going through the instructions very carefully before I start. This is not something I want to screw up. So here goes. Well, that's that. Seat and fuel tank off. The majority of the coolant's out of it too. Um, disconnected both um, connections here from the tank. Definitely spilled some, but got the majority of it sucked out there. It's remarkably very dirty. Um, I found it was really clean at first, but then once it got down to the last little dregs of what was actually like sediment in the tunnel, uh, there was quite a bit of dirty sediment in it, so it's just as well. I think that I'll be putting new coolant in. So, now it's time to decide how much is coming off here exactly. The instructions are pretty clear, and I need to take the instructions from Mountain Tech, and then... The instructions for my skins chop tunnel bumper and make the two mesh so that uh, I get the result that I want. So it's going to be a bunch of measuring and double measuring before I start getting ready to actually chop this. So here goes. going back now that is chopped uh-huh anyway they recommend using a circular saw which I think would be a lot easier uh, and you'd have a better time cutting a straight edge but honestly I'm not disappointed with that edge one bit considering I did it with the old angle grinder yeah there's your seven inches gone. Now, I will consult the directions again very carefully, but I know that the next step is to clean these burrs up all in here, make this look pretty and clean all along here, but particularly inside both of these. And then we will uh, flush air through it and all that good stuff just to make sure there's no burrs that have gone down in there that would contaminate our coolant more. Anyway, there's no going back now. So here goes. cleanup done here I started out with the burr on the drill but that's pretty aggressive and then I ended up switching to this uh, just a sandpaper regular pad I just folded up a million different ways so I could stick it in there a bunch of times and then switch to this at the end obviously it still needs to be cleaned out but you'll notice the edge looks really tidy you can see all the gunk in there that I'm gonna have to flush out for sure but the edge there's no lip whatsoever I'm actually being extremely picky about this just so that this doesn't come back to bite me so I got both sides looking really good there 
no lip. So yeah, looking good. Up next is gonna be flushing the system, which doesn't look like fun, but either way, we gotta add fluid at the front of the tunnel there where we did the disconnect, where I got my two pink and blue rags. Uh, it's some sort of gender reveal thing going on up there, I don't know. Anyway, we'll add water up there just one side at a time, add uh, water and then blow it out and just keep flushing it until everything looks clean as can be in here and then we block it off keep it clean and do the other side so time to get cleaning <laughs> done I got I used a funnel and just poured water to the end here obviously that was before I lifted the front of the, the sled so that way this part of the tunnel would hold water I'd let it build up water then use the hose and just pinch it off as best as I could with my hand in a rag and blow the water through and it would all Come squirting out the end once that side looked clean repeat the same process on this side pouring water into the end here letting it build up and then squirting did that multiple times on both sides until with a flashlight i'll grab one here with a flashlight it looks nice and clean all the way up in there nothing but a little bit of water and some bubbles and then jack the front up so that it can sit with a downhill lean on the tunnel believe it or not that is downhill I checked with a level and now we let it dry. I'll probably use the air hose, squirt it through one more time, just get most of it. Let it sit there and dry for a good while. And then uh, the next step is gonna be getting the ends here all cleaned up with alcohol and swabs like that so that it's just right for the epoxy to set in there. So it's gonna be a bit of a break while we let everything dry. I'll just be reviewing the instructions. Well, back at her today. Doing the next steps on the chopped tunnel here. Let her sit overnight with the heat on in the shop. We had her propped up so that it would drain. So there is no moisture in here whatsoever. Everything looks clean and nice there. Next step, according to the directions, we're going to use rubbing alcohol and we're going to clean this really well paying attention to getting all the little corners and stuff like that and then once that's done we'll carry on from there test fitting the little pieces in there we got to drill a hole for a rivet so yeah come along for the ride pretty using 99% isopropyl rubbing alcohol and then I've test fitted these now the only thing I got a comment on 
is if you look at the outside corner of the tunnel here, right there, it's a very even arc all the way through there. Now, the corresponding part of this adapter, it's hard to see, is a little bit square. And so you can see the shiny spot right there on that edge and on that edge right there. So both sides here, where as it goes in, it is very tight along that side. You can see it quite well there now. Um, very tight along that edge. So I did have to, and I double checked, it's not that there's any sort of lip on here. That's just the angle of the side of this tunnel. And it's slightly different from the angle that this, this is just a little bit more square. You can kind of see that there. The adapter's a little bit more square than the tunnel. So it took some coaxing with the small hammer, tapping it in. I was made sure not to really force it. Um, um, so it's a little tight there. I don't know if a guy could sand that down a bit to allow this to slide in and out easily by hand. But personally, I don't think the extra tightness will be any sort of issue there. Um, then once I got that in position and I was happy with the position, drill the hole down here, 3 16 hole, a quarter inch from the end here, and test fit the rivet so that you know um, that once you've got this all epoxied up and tucked in there that you won't have any issues getting that rivet in there. So yeah, that side was a little tight. This other side was even tighter. You can see the residual aluminum markings on this from just having been so tight going in over here. So a little interesting, definitely took a little bit of coaxing to get it in there, um, but then is super tight, uh, super tight, and I think that'll be a good thing, not a bad thing. So yeah, I'm gonna go with that. I'm not gonna try sanding this down or modifying it to make it fit any more smoothly. Um, I think the tightness will be good. Um, so you can see a little bit there too, because it's tight on that end right there as it comes in. So definitely a snug fit. And I've double, triple checked. I have good clearance here. There's no lip or edge on here. So it's not that, that I've failed to get this properly cleaned up. It's just, that's the difference in these two pieces here. So the rivet holes are in. I've double checked again that there's no burrs from having drilled these rivet holes because you you have to drill them after you've inserted these and you're not supposed to insert these until you've cleaned this with rubbing alcohol. So that's good to go. Um, next step is gonna be grab a few more Q-tips, use the rubbing alcohol once again, clean this each side another time, clean each of these along all the edges that it gets inserted. I'm not worried about where I bumped it with the hammer and stuff like that. That doesn't bother us. But this, we want to clean this with rubbing alcohol again. Make sure it is perfectly prepared there. And then double, triple check in here. And then it'll be time to start mixing up some epoxy. So here goes. <laughs> on I think it's safe to say I got plenty of the epoxy in there got the rivet in on both sides now I'm just deciding whether I'm gonna wipe as much of this excess epoxy off as I can or if I wait till it's hard and then cut it off then so I think about that for a second and then of course 
we added the JB Ultimate Black RTV Silicon on both ends of the pipe here. And all I gotta do now is tighten those two clamps and yeah, decide whether I'm gonna clean up this epoxy before it hardens, just smear it, or if I'll wait till it hardens and kinda carve it off with a utility knife or something to make it smooth in the areas that matter. So yeah, now it's kinda time to let her sit. Uh, supposed to keep it inside nice and warm for a minimum of uh, 24 hours, so. Yeah, might be on hold for a little bit while we let everything cure. Well, I decided to clean up all the extra epoxy on the top of these. I definitely left it still with a lot of extra there, but I didn't want to have clearance issues when I go to put the end cap over here. So I just figured I'd clean it up a bit. There's still lots of material there. I'm not worried about the seal one bit. Um, we definitely had very tight fit and plenty of epoxy. So calling that good. Got the clamps tightened down and that is about it for now. I got the heater on. Sorry, you can probably hear that in the background just to keep it nice and warm in here. Make sure she cures up nicely. Uh, it's not something I want to fiddle with until we know it's good to go. All in all, I have a very high level of confidence that this is has been a successful operation so far. Alrighty. So should be good to go. I'm gonna start riveting the end cap on here and then I'm going to get the bumper thrown on here. So here goes. is what I've chopped off so far. Seven inches here, and then a nice much of the tunnel here. So she's a wee bit different. Pretty excited. <laughs> notice I have not drilled and riveted all of these on here yet um, and I haven't even secured these bolts completely yet reason being I'm gonna take this bumper off and get it powder coated so that it matches these so actually these are gonna go get power powder coated lime squeeze and this white bumper that's on here because I broke my good one last winter and white was the only one that was available. Both of those are gonna go get powder coated lime squeeze, just so this whole girl looks good. But, not gonna lie, I like this. This is sweet. We've got our end cap on and our hose protector up under there hard to see but and we've got our flap on now this is a stock flap that I have chopped up so they say that the flap should extend past the end of the track it might be a little too short I might have to look into getting something just a tiny bit longer 
for that. So that's kind of it for now. I also have new steering blocks coming in because, and of course, we still gotta flip this baby on its side and add our boondock cooler. So that'll be coming up next. But as she sits now, we've made big progress. Big progress. And man, am I excited to feel what this is like with the shorter tunnel. Anyway, stand by. More coming soon.